Good evening. For the record, I'm Michael Widmer, town moderator for the town of Belmont. We have a quorum, so I would like to call to order the resumption of the special town meeting of September 23rd, 2020. We'll now go to the best please, on our vote. Dave, I'm getting a terrible letter. All right, please vote uh, for the test here. One, two, or three. Thank you. We'll do this for another 30 seconds. Adriana Poole, you have your hand raised. We'll <coughs> unmute you. Could you please tell us what your story is? This is Ellen. Hi, Ellen. It's Adriana. Uh, I don't seem to see my name in here. And I'm not sure why, because I'm logged in. Um, in the voting. Um, you are blue. You have already cast blue, your so, vote. Okay, okay. Thank okay, you for, uh, okay. yep. Yeah, please lower okay. your hands. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we're all set. We can show the tally for, all right. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we can do a brief scroll here. Thank you. We'll now turn to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, Turn to a recognition. We had a moment of silence, as you know, for uh, Henry Kazarian and Penny Schaefer at Monday's meeting for their long service, both of whom had passed away. We were not aware at the time uh, until after the meeting when somebody told us that Henry Hall passed away in June. Henry was a force in the state and in Belmont. He was a driving force behind the Minuteman School and Vocational Education in the state of Massachusetts. He was a uh, public, uh, public interest, not public interest, public 
uh, government lawyer. He um, worked with the legislature on many, many important issues. He then served in Belmont in, as a town meeting member from Precinct 1 for many, many years. And then he served for uh, 18 years as town moderator. He preceded me as moderator and I was a town meeting member for the entire time of his service. And uh, it's fair to say that I uh, learned one heck of a lot from him. And I personally uh, owe him gratitude, but so does the town of Belmont and the state of Massachusetts. So I would ask for a moment of silence to remember Henry. Thank you. Thank you. I now turn to the um, rules for tonight. Uh, let me say first, in addition to the admissions to the floor that I enumerated on Monday night, I would add Corey Taylor, Ross Ivana, Kristen Daly, and Regina Casiano. They will all be speaking uh, to Article 10, and I will explain their presence uh, after we complete action on Article 9 and get to Article 10. The rules and procedures are the same as they were the other night. Uh, I would add one that I did not mention, and that is financial interest. According to our bylaws, quote, a town meeting member who speaks upon any matter in which the speaker or his or her immediate family has a direct financial interest shall first disclose such interest to the meeting, unquote. So I would remind uh, speakers of that because especially potentially under Article 9, certainly under Article 10, somebody's a spouse of a union member, for example, they should disclose. Having said that, I want to emphasize there's nothing wrong with town meeting members advocating positions in which they have an interest. It's simply incumbent on them to disclose. So tonight, as you know, we have two articles. We hope we can complete action on both of them. Um, and uh, depending on how late it is, we would ask a sense of town meeting if we're nine o'clock before we finish Article 9. I certainly hope we finish that article before then and can uh, move on readily to Article 10 and complete action tonight. Uh, finally, a word just on the discourse. We've had over the years, many, many contentious issues. Longtime town meeting members are well aware of that. Uh, we have, I think, in the recent past, been able to deal with these contentious issues in a very straightforward and diplomatic way, honoring the, uh, uh, the responsibility of both sides to respect all opinions and to do it in a uh, polite way. Uh, so I would ask town meeting members tonight to remember that and to engage in civil discourse, no matter how strong the feelings. I'll now turn it to the town clerk to do some uh, further preliminaries. Uh, Ellen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Belmont's special town meeting. Moderator Mike Widmer has asked me to review a few key points regarding the technology in use for tonight's remote or virtual town meeting. Town meeting members, presenters, and some town employees are the only people on this Zoom webinar. In addition, we have a few guests as special subject matter experts that Mike has already reviewed. Members of the public are welcome to watch on www.belmontmedia.org or on their community access television on channel eight or channel 28, depending on your vendor. This town meeting is being televised live on Belmont Media. For town meeting members who are voting at home who are watching the cable television broadcast, there may be a 40 second delay in what you see on television.
However, your turning point device will open at the same time as everyone else's. Town meeting members should have already set up their turning point accounts. Turning point is the only way to be given attendance credit and to vote tonight. Town meeting members needing technical support during the town meeting should feel free to call our technology team at any of the telephone numbers I provided to you in my email sent yesterday morning, Tuesday. We ask all town meeting members to vote only after the moderator has declared that the polling is open. And please vote as soon as you can. The moderator will give a fair warning when polling is about to close. In the event you cannot get your turning point account to record your vote, your emergency vote team is waiting for you to call at the telephone numbers we have provided again in my email from Tuesday morning. Town meeting members will not be able to share their video unless they are specifically have made arrangements to do so in advance and are considered panelists for the meeting. But we ask the town meeting members should be on mute whenever they're not actively speaking to the town meeting to avoid any of that background noise distraction which cannot be avoided. Town meeting members who want to speak should raise their hand using the bottom toolbar on your Zoom controls. Just hover your mouse over the bottom of the black box uh, to be recognized by the moderator. He will recognize people to speak in the order in which the hands were raised, which is what webinar allows us to do. When the moderator invites you to, to name uh, by name to speak, please unmute yourself um, and you'll get a little message that says, please unmute yourself and the, your microphone will appear at the bottom left. Please be certain to identify yourself every time you speak um, by name and by precinct. Just like at the microphone at town meeting, realizing that we have a court reporter who is transcribing every word. If you're dialed into Zoom using just the telephone number, please press star nine to raise your hand and star six, I'm told, will mute and unmute you once you are allowed to control your audio. Town meeting members who wish to make a point of order should use the Q&A, which is again located at the bottom tool of your Zoom toolbar by typing the words point of order only. A staff person supporting the town meeting will inform the moderator immediately that you have a point of order and break in for you. The moderator then will call on you to speak and your audio will be enabled. If you don't have a microphone on your computer, we suggest that you will have to use the Q&A bar uh, tool again at the bottom toolbar in Zoom. Please type your name, your precinct and your comment and or your question. A member of the town meeting team will let you know the name of the person who will be acting as your proxy. Listen for the moderator to recognize that person who will then read your question and comment or comment directly and exactly as you have typed it, including your name and precinct. Finally, if the moderator asks for unanimous consent and you do not choose to give it, you must immediately raise your hand by using the raise hand function or the Q&A function to get the immediate attention to the moderator before we move on to the next motion. Mr. Moderator, with your permission, I will read the oath of office for new town meeting members who did not accept the oath the other night, yes, but please. who still need, who were just elected in June of 2020. Please. Thank you. Do you solemnly affirm that you will uphold the Constitution of the United States, Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the bylaws of the town of Belmont, and that you will impartially perform the duties of town meeting member to which you have been duly elected, keeping uppermost in your mind what is best for the town of Belmont and its inhabitants. If you are a town meeting member who was elected in June and did not accept the oath, on Monday the 21st, please vote now. We will put up a voting slide. If you accepted the oath on Monday, there is no need to do it again. And we'll just wait for a minute or so till we catch. I know there are a few of you who had called and we'll just wait. Thank you.
Looks like we were about done, Mr. Moderator. Would that be all right? Please. Thank you. Uh, please close the polls. It looks like we've caught everyone. 35, I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, again, through you, may I read the return of service of the warrant for the continuation of tonight's meeting? Yes, please. I, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, town clerk, do hereby certify that I gave notice of the adjourned session of the special town meeting held by remote access September 21, 2020 by posting an attested copy of the notice of the adjournment on the town clerk's official bulletin board in town hall, on the town website, and at least five other places in town, giving notice that the special town meeting had not been completed and had been adjourned to meet today, again, Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020, by remote access at 6 p.m., briefly stating the business to be acted upon, all in accordance with the Representative Town Meeting Acts of 1926 as amended, and Section 30-110C of the General Bylaws of the Town of Belmont. Thank you, Helen. We'll now proceed to the business of the town meeting. Um, may we have the next slide, please? This motion, the preliminary motion, I will read, moved that the town meeting continue to meet and act on all matters on the warrant for the special town meeting by means of the video and audio conferencing and voting technologies described in the moderator's August 17, 2020 letter to the select board posted with the warrant. As I explained uh, on Monday evening, this is part of the legislation that allows us to meet remotely and uh, it is necessary for us to uh, have town meeting assent to this action. So we would open the voting here, please. If you approve, vote yes. Opposed, no, abstain, three. Who does? In class, you have your hand raised. Mr. Plass, did you wish to speak? Well, perhaps not. Another 20 seconds on the voting. All right, plan, can we display the results? Close the polls and display the results. Final vote is 239 in favor and one opposed. Thank you. Next slide, please. We now turn to the first of the two articles uh, tonight to amend the zoning bylaw. I would call on Mr. Pinkerton to make the motion. 
Steve Pinkerton, town meeting member, precinct seven and chair of the planning board moved that the town amend the zoning bylaw by renumbering the existing section 6B and its subsections Belmont Uplands District as section 68 and inserting a new section 6B McLean District Zone 3 Overlay District as printed in the special town meeting warrant. Two thirds majority vote required. In terms of the votes, the select board, the warrant committee and the planning board all have voted unanimously in support of this motion. Mr. Pinkerton. Uh, Mr. Moderator, town meeting members and uh, fellow citizens of Belmont, the planning board's proposed zoning bylaw amendment contains a comprehensive set of standards and guidelines to realize a new vision for development of the McLean Zone 3 Senior Living District. It embodies nearly two years of collaborative effort by numerous Belmont boards and committees, town and state agencies, abutters of Zone 3, interested local citizens, McLean Hospital executives, and Northland Residential Corporation. It represents a compromise among multiple contributing interests that offers clear benefits for all interested parties and for the town of Belmont as a whole. Just a, a review of the history of this, uh, back in the, in the before time, um, in the last century in 1996, the town of Belmont and McLean Hospital created a joint land use task force to develop a mutually beneficial plan for use of McLean Hospital grounds. Three years later, the task force produced a memorandum of agreement, MOA, which included among other things, McLean District Zoning Bylaw Section 6A, which is what we're working on tonight and are basing things on tonight and a separate traffic monitoring and mitigation agreement, a TMMA between the select board and McLean Hospital. Later that year, town meeting approved the MOA by a two thirds majority and there was a town wide referendum that ratified the MOA by a 70% vote. The McLean Hospital development zones uh, that came out of this, there were, there were six enterprise zones. McLean Hospital was divided, divided into six uh, enterprise zones and several open space areas, including uh, the town cemetery. Zones 1A, 1B and 2 Zone three and zone six were residential zones. Zones four, zone four was a research and development area and zone five was McLean Hospital itself. Tonight we'll be looking at zone three. Um, could we have the next click? Thank you, <laughs> just to emphasize zone three. And then on the next slide, we see a map. The uh, residential areas that have already been developed are in blue, that's zone 1A, zone 1B, zone two and zone six which is Waverly Woods. McLean Hospital is colored in white. Zone four, the R&D area is, uh, is yet to be developed. That's, that'll be coming up shortly, I'm sure. And then we have zone three, this sort of kidney shaped yellow area down at the bottom of the screen. The, that's the closest one to Waverly Square, just to get you oriented. Next slide. McLean zone three was originally zoned to accommodate a cluster of seven six story buildings containing up to 486 units for independent and assisted senior living, memory care and, and a small nursing care unit. Located on a 13 acre parcel on a hillside sloping down uh, to uh, the south and east toward Waverly Square, it would have been quite an imposing structure looking up from Waverly Square. Uh, the property is accessed via Olmstead Drive, which is an existing private roadway from a signalized intersection, or it would be, it, 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 it was intended to be and will soon be a signalized intersection on uh, South Pleasant Street. Basically, Olmstead Drive is just behind the stop and shop on uh, South Pleasant Street. The utilities are already in place there, so water, sewer, drainage, gas, and electric. It's ready for development. Next slide. Here's what the original proposal look like. This was approved as a site plan. You can see the buildings, uh, seven of them, uh, A, th uh, I'm sorry, A through F, uh, or G, excuse me, I got my math wrong. Uh, they were to be uh, six stories up above. You can imagine that this would loom quite large up on the, on the hillside there. Next. The original zone plan, zone three plan collapsed with a bankruptcy of the initial developer and subsequent lack of market interest. In 2018, after nearly 20 years without further progress, McLean turned to Northland Residential Corporation, the developer of the woodlands in zones one and two to create a similar vision for zone three. 
Northland drew up a conceptual plan for a senior directed community uh, condominium community of 40 townhouses and two four story flats buildings. McLean and Northland then approached the town about making zoning changes to accommodate the concept. The planning board opened public hearings to consider the request on January 15th, 2019. This is what the uh, Northland proposal looked like. You can see that it's a much less dense uh, development. The, uh, the, the smaller rectangular buildings are the townhouses, uh, as, as you see from the left, left side and the bottom of your screen, those are the townhouse units, uh, pretty much two and a half stories each. And then the two apartment buildings are the flats buildings. Uh, notice that they're oriented perpendicular to the slope so that their appearance from Waverly would not be flat on and they're only four stories high on top of the parking garage and the parking garage would be an underground garage. So that's what it looked like. The, the, the previous development, can we have that? There we go. Remember, this is what was going to be there at, um, uh, at, for the senior living district. This was, this was to be uh, um, six story buildings, seven of them. And, and here's what the subsequent proposal looked like, Glenn. So a much smaller footprint, a much, uh, much uh, less obtrusive presence up on the hill. Next slide. The hearings awakened competing interests in town. They were strong competing interests. Um, it soon became clear that we weren't gonna be able to forge a consensus in time to write a zoning uh, bylaw amendment that could be adopted with a two thirds majority uh, at the 2019 uh, annual town meeting. So we closed the public hearing and looked to Northland to come up with a, a more amenable plan. Next. After further negotiations with town administrator Patrice Garvin and leaders of the housing trust and notably Rachel um, Heller and, um, and, and Betsy Lipson, uh, McLean and Northland returned with a new friendly 40B housing proposal on December 3rd, 2019. And just a reminder, a friendly 40B housing pro proposal is basically an effort to develop an affordable housing project that respects local planning objectives and zoning requirements, as opposed to a, a more uh, unfriendly uh, and often called a hostile 40B, which is an, 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 a pro proposal to put in affordable housing without much respect for local interests. And I have to say that the developer that's working with uh, for the Northland Residential has been very friendly and, and very amenable to, to the uh, working with us to uh, make sure we've got a plan that fits the town's interests. The revised proposal retained the 40 townhouses, but replaced the condominium flats with 110 multifamily rental apartments. That was something that we were all interested in, uh, in terms of accessibility, rental apartments felt like they were more, uh, uh, accessible than uh, uh, condominium flats and added more affordable uh, housing units. Starting in 20, uh, January 2020, so a year later, the planning board held 18 public meetings, 13 public hearings, and five working group sessions that also uh, accepted public input to discuss and draft a new zoning overlay article. The planning board consulted a land use planner to confirm that the CCRC, the Continuing Care uh, Retirement Community Facility uh, there uh, that was originally proposed was not viable anymore in, in the market. The select board also engaged consultants to review traffic projections for agreement with the TMMA. The, the select board is the, 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 uh, the ruling party, uh, the, the, the signatory party to the TMMA that, that uh, acts for the town of Belmont. We, we don't, we as the planning board don't have any authority over that. Next slide. The proposed section B uh, overlay uh, will serve as an overlay to the senior living district portions of the section 6A McLean district. Um, we were asked why at one point we didn't just rewrite the 6A, uh, uh, the 6A section. Um, the, the, the new 6B section is a 19 page document. The original 6A section for the entire McLean district is only 13 pages. We've gone into great detail here and trying to impose that and work that into the, the language of 6A would have been impossible. So we did it as, a, as an overlay. Dimensional and other basic zoning requirements for the new section B are consistent with the rest of the zoning by, by law. There's nothing, nothing surprising here. Uh, basically the townhouse units are gonna look a lot like the townhouse units that are already there in the woodlands. Uh, the apartment block is a very modest uh, uh, apartment block and, and will uh, conform with other uh, Belmont zoning laws. 
use allowances were adjusted to balance age restricted and non age restricted units to comport with the separate TMMA. Uh, in order, we were not interested in picking up a, a proposal that did not comport with the TMMA because there was no interest in re reopening the, the, the basic agreement to change it. Um, and so uh, we worked with the developer to adjust the, uh, the age restricted units and non age restricted units to, to make sure that the traffic would be uh, in, in line with what we had expected earlier. The Select Board, Housing Trust, Housing District, uh, Historic District Commission, Energy Committee, Land Management Committee, Department of Community Development, and the Fire Department all made significant contributions to ensure compatibility with Town of Belmont interests. Next. The bylaw includes zoning standards and requirements, as well as design guidelines to be enforced during design and site plan review. Standards and requirements are the, are the shalls of the zoning amendment. They, they include uh, siting, uh, uh, allowed uses, access limitations, dimensions. For example, for the rental apartments, the maximum number of dwelling units shall be 110. Of the 110 dwelling units, 57 shall not be age restricted. No townhouse dwelling unit shall exceed 2,400 square feet of living area, exclusive of basement area. Uh, in the apartment buildings, bicycle parking shall be provided at the ratio of at least one half space per dwelling minute, unit. So these are the shalls, and one of the most important shalls says that the planning board shall consider a long list of design guidelines during design and site plan review, and that's what we are showing next. So design guidelines uh, look at building size, scale, materials, appearance, parking structures, landscape and site improvements, et cetera, and preferred environmental and energy design considerations. So examples, the size and detail of buildings should be designed to reduce the visible, visible perception of bulk and mass. Buildings should be lead silver certifiable. Buildings and site plans should be designed to enhance the pedestrian environment. Uh, predominant wall finishes should be compatible with the existing historic structure, architecture, and other structures in McLean District. The reason these are not shells is that many of them are address code issues, which are not to be addressed in the in the zoning bylaw. The bylaw they don't belong there. Um, the, the towns do not write code; that's a state prerogative. Um, others uh, of, of the shoulds involve things that will require a certain amount of give and take. Uh, where we're balancing some interests against the next, and there's a certain judgment call that's going to be required. This is the design guidelines, the design and site plan review is another opportunity for town members to participate in the process, and that uh, is as it should be. Next slide. So the proposed zone three zoning overview here is that we have two sub districts within this senior living district now, zone three. Uh, there are the subdistricts A, a consists of 40 townhouses. They're up to three bedrooms. They are for sale units. Uh, there are two garage spaces per unit, um, 80 total parking spaces there. Uh, and 15% of them are to be affordable. Uh, and in this case, that's six units at 80% area medium income uh, AMI. Uh, and 40 units, uh, all of them are going to uh, be age restricted at 55 plus for the head of household. Um, uh, that's the, the, the bottom line requirement. Um, children would still be allowed here. Spouses who are less than uh, under 50, uh, 55 would, would be allowed as well. Um, in subdistrict B, the apartment blocks, there are two buildings. Uh, sizes range from studio to three bedroom. They are rental units. Uh, there are 1.4 garage spaces per unit, so 154 total units of parking up there. 25% uh, will be affordable, 22 at 80% AMI, and six units at 50% AMI. Um, so, and 57 of the units will be non-age restricted, and uh, 53 would be age restricted. Next slide. The impacts uh, of this development, as we see them, are that the visual mass of 40 townhouses and two apartment buildings will be far less than the original six-story, seven-building continuing care retirement community complex. Townhouses with gabled roofs similar to the woodlands will reduce appearance of bulk from below. The apartment buildings are oriented perpendicular to the slope, as I mentioned earlier. Underground parking for the apartment buildings will reduce overall building height. Uh, landscape buffers and neutral building tones will soften views from surrounding areas. Next. Just as a reminder, here's now the, the, the latest proposal. It's a little bit different graphic. Uh, this one, I guess Google Earth was in springtime now. That, that helps us with the, the appearance here. 
You can see the uh, buildings uh, clustered around on the left and, uh, uh, and, and bottom, uh, the, the, that'd be the west and south sides. Uh, those are the townhouses and the two uh, apartment blocks there are in gray uh, inside the red line. Just a, rem a reminder of what the uh, earlier uh, complex looked like. Glenn, could we get that? Thank you. So again, this is what the old complex looked like. Again, very dense, very tall. And now back to the original, uh, back to the new plan. This is what we're looking at today. So the visual impact is gonna be uh, much less than it would have been. And I think uh, quite a fine sight. Glenn, next slide. Environmental impacts, the, pr 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 the proposed design guidelines encourage LEED silver certifiable sustainable design, excuse me, accommodations for electric vehicles and for solar panels, landscaping with non-invasive plants and pesticide-free maintenance, water retentive site design and minimal, minimal, minimization of turf areas to reduce irrigation requirements, retention and protection of existing healthy viable trees, this, this place will be surrounded by um, a, a conservation area. So it'll be, I, I think, quite well uh, shielded. Um, the housing impacts, the proposed friendly uh, 40B project will uh, boost our SHI, our uh, subsidized uh, housing inventory percentage by 1.1%, increasing our total percentage to 7.8%. Now that includes uh, the Royal Belmont and Cushing Village, which is not online yet. Bear in mind that the required percentage is 10%. We still have a ways to go, but this will get us uh, moving and we'll, we'll um, show, show that we're making progress, uh, serious progress toward meeting our 10% goal. Um, just to review here, basically 28 uh, uh, of the units will be 80% AMI, uh, six of them will be 50%. Uh, Due to the quirks in the 40B um, uh, uh, regulations, basically the SHI inventory eligible units will be 116. That's uh, six in the, uh, in the townhouse area and 110 for all of the units in the apartment area. Uh, basically the uh, count goes with the deed and the apartments will be under one deed. Senior housing, we, we will have new senior housing opportunities, 40 townhouses uh, for, for sale units and uh, 53 apartment units. Um, this is, this is a, 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 a of major interest to, I think, uh, to, to people looking to downsize. This will be a real opportunity. Next. Traffic impacts. Uh, estimated traffic is now expected to meet TMMA limits. Uh, basically, the, the, the key number is the 36 expected morning uh, peak hour trips. This is comported. This, this meets with the uh, traffic mitigation, uh, monitoring mitigation agreement. Post-occupancy traffic will be monitored and mitigated as needed to conform, uh, confirm comportment with allowed limits. And traffic mitigation options in case they don't include making additional roadway and intersection improvements, and also potentially adding shuttle service. Shuttle service was not, uh, expect, is not expected to be needed at this point in time. And that's something that would be uh, governed under the TMMA at any rate. And it's something that, that could be developed much later, but. Uh, only after the place is occupied and we see what the traffic looks like. Next slide. Finally, uh, we did have a look at, at fiscal impacts. The Select Board commissioned a demographic study to help estimate annual revenues and costs. Uh, this was something that, that, uh, that was asked for of, of the Select Board. Um, basically, uh, I'm giving you very gross averages here, but for the next 15 years, or the first 15 years at any rate, uh, assuming that'll come online in, in, in another year or so, or two. <laughs> um, property tax revenues are expected at about 1.4 million. Police, senior services, and education costs are expected at half that. Again, this is an average over the first 15 years. Uh, note that the public, uh, the, the, the uh, property, the, uh, the public works costs of snow removal, trash pickup, uh, road maintenance, and et, et cetera, will be privately funded. This is, on a, this is a private development on private property. Uh, construction uh, permit fees uh, will be about a million dollars in, in over the construction period, and the bonding capacity will be 25 million. It's the expected amount, which is which will help us with our borrowing capabilities. Next slide. So, in conclusion, the proposed McLean Zone Three overlay amendment offers. <clears throat> ah, thank you. Affordable housing for families and seniors with moderate incomes. 
SHI units that will improve Belmont's eligibility for safe harbor status under Chapter 40B. Age restricted housing to reserve additional options for seniors. Tax revenue and increased bonding capacity to improve Belmont's financial health. Passage requires a two thirds majority vote. Planning board unanimously recommends favorable action. And that's it. Thank you, Glenn Castro, for that excellent job. Could you back up to the last slide so we get the conclusions? Thank you. Very good. Mr. Moderator, I turn that back to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pinkerton, and thanks to the Planning Board for all your great work on this uh, proposal. So we now open this up for discussion from town meeting members. Lisa Parboli. Hi, Lisa Pargoli, Precinct 4, Town pre, um, Meeting Member. Um, I have a question still about this. Um, as we left the town meeting last um, fall, you know, I, I just have a really hard time with all of this housing, 40B housing, any kind of housing. Belmont right now, we're just overcrowded. Um, I live on White Street, and you're talking about this traffic. We weren't supposed to have traffic when Star Market went in. And right now, if you get to the bottom of White Street and you want to go to Mill Street, you've got to go through six lights. If you want to go to continue on Trapella Road, there's seven. Basically, you could throw a rock from the bottom of my street to Mill Street. And, and I can't imagine with another 154 more cars coming right off of that area that you can even consider the fact that, you know, it's going to work. Um, I'd just like to know how you think that's going to go and what you think the capacity of incoming children into the school system is going to be. Mr. Pinkerton. Um, well, we, we do have the results of the, uh, the, 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 the traffic estimates. Um, they, are, they are in agreement with the traffic mitigation and monitoring, monitoring and mitigation, excuse me for getting that backwards, monitoring and mitigation agreements. Um, this again is something perhaps uh, we should turn this back to the select board because the, uh, the, the TMMA is, is under their purview. Uh, but these, these estimates were agreed to long ago um, and they are, have not been updated to, uh, to, um, uh, to account for the fact that, that uh, traffic allowances have increased over time uh, from the, the, when this was developed 20 years ago, recognizing that there are, is more traffic on the road. So I think we've got a pretty conservative estimate going here for the amount of traffic. Uh, school uh, attendance is not uh, something that we consider in, in writing zoning. In fact, we're not allowed to. And at, at town meeting, we're, uh, we, we're not to be considering school attendance when it comes to this. Um, uh, children are a protected class and, and uh, our, our housing interests uh, don't don't look at this. Um, I can turn that over to Rachel Heller for additional comment. Ms. Heller, you're next in line in any case. Okay, um, I can speak to that first. Um, Steve is right. Uh, sorry, Please Rachel introduce Heller. yourself, Ms. Heller. Yeah, sorry about that. Rachel Heller, town meeting member, precinct three, co-chair of the housing trust. Um, Steve is correct that uh, under fair housing laws, we cannot make land use or zoning decisions or housing decisions based on who would live there. And the reality is that even if we tried to do that, it wouldn't actually have the impact that people expect. Um, our planning agency, MAPC, did an analysis of building and school enrollment and found that there was really no correlation. Um, there is growth in, uh, in a handful of communities in greater Boston. There's growth in communities with particularly good school systems, and there's growth in communities that are, are particularly affordable. So we could choose to build nothing, and we will still see uh, more enrollment because we have great schools and, and a great community. Um, but now I, I'd like to make my comments on behalf of the Housing Trust, if I may. Yes, please do. Um, so I speak on behalf of the Housing Trust in support of this article. The proposal for homes at McLean is a win for Belmont. This proposal helps to meet multiple needs in town. It provides affordable options to own and rent. It provides some apartments that are affordable to households with very low incomes. It creates opportunities for downsizing and it also creates opportunities for households of all types. It moves Belmont towards a more sustainable future. It provides revenue for our town. And as noted by Steve, it advances Belmont's count towards our 10% affordability benchmark set by state law. This proposal 
was not always a win. When it was first proposed, the Housing Trust and many members of the community spoke out against it. The original proposal by Northland was for luxury home ownership with affordability set at a very high level. This simply did not meet our needs. The town and state had recently approved Belmont's housing production plan, which details our affordable needs and identifies strategies to get there, including development at McLean. And we had a different, we had a different vision. With partnership from the planning board led by Chuck Clark at the time and continued by Steve Pinkerton, our town administrator, Patrice Garvin, technical assistance provided by the Massachusetts Housing Partnership and a real openness from the developer, Jack Dolly. We worked together to make this a proposal that meets Belmont's housing needs. The proposal will move us towards our 10% benchmark and it will help us to achieve safe harbor status with the state. That means that Belmont will have more control for once two years in determining how affordable housing is developed. It's important to note that being in a safe harbor allows us to do not deny a proposal through 40B. We still need to develop affordable housing. We need to unlock the tools that our town can use to proactively do this. This includes more zoning changes and funding. This vote is a big step and congratulations you know, to all those who vote for it. Next, we need to implement other strategies that are named in our housing production plan to allow for housing that creates opportunities for all who need it. This includes seniors, families with children, people with disabilities, people with low and extremely low incomes and a diversity in housing stock that fosters more diversity in our population. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, Town Clerk. At this time, there are nine people in line um, waiting to speak on this question. And the first three people are Phil Lawrence, Marty Bittner, and a call-in user number one, who um, at that time we will hope to identify. Thank you, Ellen. Um, I will call on, first let me remind people that they have a um, three minute limit. Um, Ms. Sellard was within that, so that is not a criticism of her. Um, and I will call on Phil Lawrence. Phil Hi. Lawrence. Yeah, thank you. Phil Lawrence, uh, town meeting men member of precinct four. Um, uh, being a, a, a resident of Waverly uh, area, I'm of course uh, uh, concerned with the uh, the you know how that affects the area traffic wise of course but also visually and i noted that one of your objectives uh stated objectives was the the preservation of uh vegetation um looking at the plan i don't <laughs> see quite frankly a, a lot of um uh opportunity for the preservation of uh of vegetation existing vegetation um you know the that section of of the McLean property has uh, amazing amazing specimens of tree uh, and very very large um, when when some were removed uh, to create that little strip for the boundary it was very noticeable from from uh, the Waverly Square area um, and uh, I you know so I'm, I'm my question is uh, um, you know what what opportunities are, how successful are you, do you and expect to be with respect to the preservation of, um, of vegetation? And furthermore, are there opportunities to stay away from the, the, the um, you know, southernmost boundary of the, of the property to s uh, preserve as, as much of the vegetation as possible? And uh, can those be visited? Mr. Pinkerton. Um. I, I, I think, bear, bear in mind that you're, you're looking at a conceptual, I'm sorry, Steve Pinkerton, uh, chair of the planning board, excuse thank me. You. Uh, I, I think that you, you need to recognize that, uh, thank you for the comment, first of all, and I appreciate your concern. Uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a tree lover myself and, and, and like the open space that's available up there. There is a certain reality, as you recognize, to, to any kind of construction project, and it, 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 it is incumbent on all of us to try to understand that uh, if this is going to go through, that some trees are going to come down. Uh, what you're looking at is a conceptual plan. There are open areas up in that property. There are a lot of scrub trees that are not particularly desirable. Um, so, but I don't have the details. And this is something that I think would be best be addressed when we get to design and site plan review. Um, uh, there, there is an intention to preserve as much as possible. That's about all we can offer at this point in time. Um, 
I, may, I, may I assume from that that there is going to be opportunity, more opportunity for input into the design and uh, and maybe specifics around preserving. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. That that's that's certainly the case, and and that would remind the people that that there is another whole step to go through when when the actual plans come in. There, there'll be a whole other round of opportunities for people to have input. Okay. So thank good. you for thank that. You. Thank you, yeah. Marty Bittner. You're next. Hi, this is Marty Bittner, town meeting member, precinct eight, co-chair of the energy committee. I rise in favor of this article and I'd like to speak a little bit about the uh, energy, uh, energy considerations. Um, as you'll recall, the Belmont has the goal of reducing our carbon emissions by 80% by 2050. And to do that, um, town meeting resoundingly passed the climate action roadmap which calls for uh, electrifying uh, home heating and vehicles and cleaning up our electricity supply. And this development um, hits all three of those points. Uh, in our discussions with, with Jack, who um, was very friendly and amenable to our um, considerations, uh, you can see that in the overlay itself, there are requirements for EV charging spots at the uh, rental units. There's also, uh, they will also be wired. The townhomes will be wired for uh, EV charging stations. And so it supports electric vehicle adoption. Um, the, the roof space will maximize the solar panel potential. So it'd be a source of clean electricity. And uh, Jack is also amenable to doing the home heating with electric heat pumps. Um, so from the energy committee's perspective and in the sense that those of you in town meeting that want to continue to make good progress on our climate action goals, I ask you to join me in supporting this motion. Thank you, Ellen. Mr. Moderator, Ellen Cushman. At uh, this time, there are 10 hands raised to speak for this question. And the first three are call-in user number one, Michael McNamara and Anis Sengupta. We do ask that call in user number one, identify yourself and uh, give your precinct when you are uh, permitted to speak. I recognize the call in caller. Hello. Mr. Mercier, I recognize your voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got several comments from the guy. This originally was Mr. set Mr. up for C. Mr. Mercy, oh. uh, for the record, please identify yourself, even if I know who you are. Yeah. I'm sorry, Donald Mercia, Tommy member, Precincts 8. Thank you. Originally, this was set up for CCIC, which was a, probably an aggressive program. On the discussion of CCICs, because I've looked at several of them in the area, they all have several years waiting lists. For that, then, so that doesn't that tells me there's a need for CCRC. Maybe it, we should be looking at the CCRC, but not quite an aggressive uh, size. But if we're going to retain what we what we have here on any part of what you're proposing, I don't. I think all the units should be two bedroom. Number one to lessen the impact on the town, and and uh, you're listing the townhouses there. 55 and over. I think most people in 55 and over would probably uh, prefer to be all on one level. That's what most of us who live in two-story houses we'd be looking to, so we're moving on, on one level. So uh, I, I, I think if you're going to have townhouses, you ought to have them on one level. And, and uh, this proposal you, you have here, you, you might have some positive cash flow, but I think if you take in some of these uh, these suggestions, you're going to reduce the town impact on their services. But I'm a strong advocate for really looking at the CCRC program and maybe not impact the area so much with so many units. But uh, I think the elderly do need apartments to be able to downsize, but and, uh, the apartment should be set at... Uh, uh, at two bed two bedroom apartments, I, I don't think there should be any uh, uh, 55 age restricted 
townhouse apartments because I think most people are going to, that age or older, are going to, would probably prefer to be on one level. Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Mr. Pinkerton, do you have a comment or shall I proceed? No, that's that's fine. Thank you, Don. Um, we, we, we have heard these comments for the last eight months and have crafted a, the amendment according to what we, the input that we have. We appreciate your, your input. The next speaker is Michael McNamara. Um, hi, Michael McNamara, town meeting member, precinct seven. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Um, I just wanted to say, I think a big thing we always hear is Belmont is a town of homes. Um, we really pride ourselves on having nice communities where a lot of people can live and, and work and, and sort of enjoy all the benefits of Belmont. But I think there's a real issue between the haves and the have nots between people who can afford it and people who are heavily rent burdened or heavily burdened um, housing wise and have a hard time living affordably in Belmont. I think this is a big service to helping us become more affordable um, and more welcoming. We always pride ourselves on our town, uh, on our houses and our town being welcoming. So I really hope that we, we support this and recognize a lot of our seniors, a lot of our you know parents or grandparents want to stay near their kids. They want to stay near the school. They want to stay near you know their family. They don't want to have to move out of town, but they're worried about costs. So this is a big job in helping uh, make Belmont more affordable and more understanding to the elderly um, and also to the families who really want their elderly family members to stay put and stay around. Thank you, Michael. Anis Sengupta. Um, hello, Anis Sengupta, town meeting member, precinct seven. I'm speaking in favor of this amendment. I am very impressed by the way that the, um, the housing trust and the planning board have worked together and worked across all the town committees to put together such a thoughtful and um, consider a proposal that um, really takes into account all of the different uh, interests and needs and um, things that the town is considering. This, this is in line with our housing production plan as Rachel Heller discussed, which also identified the McLean property as one of the only um, sites for, uh, that would be reasonable for the development of the um, kind of housing that supports the housing needs of our town today. Um, uh, you know, anyone who has been recently in the housing market understands that regionally, statewide, uh, we are facing a, a housing crisis and prices only are going up. Uh, affordability is, a, is an important issue. Housing for all for families and for seniors and all different um, types of needs need to be available in our town. Also, as uh, Michael McNamara mentioned, to make Belmont continue to be the welcoming place um, that we all have, have experienced here. So um, I, I thank the planning board, I thank the housing trust, and I thank all of the committees and town staff who have put so much time and energy into putting this together. And I hope that the town meeting will um, vote to approve this. Thank you. Carolyn Bishop. Thank you, sorry about that. Um, I, it's Carolyn Bishop, town meeting member, precinct one. I realized the thoughtful work that went into this and it's a wonderful amendment. Um, my only concern is the wording of the environmental impacts was very gentle and, and says encourage. And we certainly do encourage. And I wondered if there's any incentive for any of those factors to be more than encouraged or are, um, is the developer encourageable? as opposed to incorrigible. And I hope that uh, it, it is as successful as it appears it will be. Thank you for your work. Mr. Pinkerton, did you have a comment? No, th uh, thank you. Thank you for that, that uh, comment. Mr. Moderator, Ellen yes. Cushman, town clerk. At this time, there are 11 attendees who would like to speak on this question. And the first three people in line are Vincent Stanton, someone known as RMM and Cosmo Macero. We will ask RMM at that time particularly to please identify yourself and use precinct. Thank you. The next speaker is Vincent Stanton. Mr. Stanton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And uh, thank you, Mr. Pinkerton and the planning board for a thorough process and a, a lucid 
presentation. I support this article. I have two questions. Could you uh, give us a little detail about the calculations that went into the um, financial model where you derive a, a net $700,000? The expenses are almost certainly driven almost entirely by your assumption about the uh, the number of uh, school a number of children who would attend Belmont schools and if you could just ex explain a little bit about how you came up with whatever uh, number you you have for that the second question is what is the mechanism for um, invoking uh, traffic mitigation measures should the traffic um, once the um, development is uh, completed, turn out to be more than um, expected. What are, you, you mentioned that, that under the TMMA, there are uh, provisions where that could be brought up, but, but could you explain how those would work? Thank you. Mr. Pinkerton, please identify yourself. Steve Pinkerton, uh, Chair of the Planning Board. Uh, both of those questions, I'm gonna to defer to, uh, I think probably, Roy Epstein would be the best uh, to answer both of them at the same time. We may want to refer to Glenn Clancy on the specifics of the, of the calculations for the, uh, for the cost estimates. And that the TMMA and enforcement of that is, is basically a function of the uh, select board. So I would defer the questions to, to Roy. Mr. Epstein, are you? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Roy Epstein, <laughs> chair of the select board. Uh, the select board engaged a skillful demographer in the spring to make projections of the number of school children uh, to be generated by this development, assuming different configurations of units, number of units, size of units, uh, whether they're uh, uh, age restricted and so forth. And the projections of the number of school children from the proposal that you're looking at tonight is his work. And he has, we think, demonstrated his uh, abilities in this type in this area because he's done the projections for the Belmont Public Schools, and he's proven to be very accurate. That said, uh, his task uh, is challenging because he needs to forecast school children um, coming from this development after it's all built out and people move in. So that's years in the future. But he's he has uh, generated the best estimates we know of, uh, but in the end, they're only estimates, but that, that's what you have to do in this business. Uh, these are our best forecasts of what to expect from the demographic side. On the traffic side, uh, there I would ask Glenn Clancy, there are provisions in the TMMA uh, contractual language about monitoring and signalization at Pleasant Street and financial penalties if the traffic generation targets are exceeded. I just don't have those committed to memory. If Glenn Clancy can help us with that, uh, maybe we could get somewhere. Mr. Clancy. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, Glenn Clancy, Director of Community Development. So the, the uh, the monitoring and mitigation agreement really starts with the application of a building permit. It's at that point where the developer has to present uh, what is called a traffic demand management plan. I would suggest that what we, what we have seen from the developer over the past several months is really in line with what that plan would be. What, he, what he's supposed to be doing upon the issuance of a building permit is demonstrating to the town how he's going to manage his traffic to stay within the thresholds that have been identified in the agreement. And so I believe, I, I believe he's already done that. Um, so the next sort of uh, you know, checkpoint along the way is once the development reaches 90% occupancy, it is from that point forward that, that myself as the town engineer has the opportunity at any time to ask for traffic counts. Once I exercise that right, it's then the burden is then on the developer to demonstrate that the traffic being generated from the site, morning peak, afternoon peak, and average daily is in compliance with the agreement. If it is not, there are fines that are built into the agreement that they're required to pay. There is, there is the requirement for a modified traffic demand plan that has to be submitted. 
because if the counts are demonstrating non-compliance, he has to come up with an alternative plan to show how he's going to achieve compliance. There's follow-up testing that's required, and every follow-up test is associated with a fine as well. Um, ultimately, the town has the ability to shut off portions of the parking on the site. So to really affect the occupancy of the development, if the developer cannot get the traffic counts below the levels they need to be at. Uh, and then the process just develops to the point where the developer does what needs to be done at, you know, in whatever way they, they identify that we approve of uh, so that ultimately we can relax the restrictions and, and hopefully we get a full use of a parking lot again for his development along with compliance with the traffic management agreement. Thank you, Mr. Clancy. We now turn to RMM. Please identify yourself. Rafi Manjikan, town meeting member, precinct three. Welcome, Rafi. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Roy, I made an effort to address the, the question that I had, which were the assumptions used in the tax revenue uh, forecast. Has the warrant committee uh, done an analysis or an assessment of what the uh, the forecast is as a counterpoint to what was done by, if I, if I heard correctly, Mr. Clancy? And then I had a second question there. About let me ask. Let, let me ask Miss Lapp if she's here. She's there. Well, let me ask anybody else. In the, I don't know if Laurie's here. If anybody, uh, this is Laurie Slap. Oh, hi, Laurie. Thank you. Uh, town meeting member, precinct six, and chair of the Warren Committee. Um, we did look at the assumptions and the model that was put forward to review the analysis that was done. We did not do our own independent analysis. Um, as Mr. Epstein said, we took the demographer's work. Um, we had trust in that based on what he had done for the schools. And so we looked at it carefully, but did not do an, an independent analysis. Uh, uh, go Mr. Moderator, Mr. Moderator, may I add to that? Uh, that uh, Mr. Epstein. Uh, Roy Epstein, uh, chair of the select board. Uh, Ms. Slapp is being a little bit modest because the, the warrant committee actually reviewed the model and questioned just quite closely about some of the assumptions that went into it, particularly on the cost side for town services. And we went back and validated that those assumptions were actually reasonable. Yes, uh, this is Laurie Slap again, um, chair of the Warren Committee, town meeting member precinct six. I should I should emphasize that the at the uh, conclusion, the Warren Committee was com very comfortable with the analysis that had been done. Thank you. And Mr. Manjikian, you had a second question. Yes, I did. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. And what were the anticipated costs that the developer put forward for the rental units um, in, the, in the vein of some of the previous speakers of making uh, the units affordable option for uh, folks to come into Belmont? I know the Bradford was looking at $3 a square foot. Um, so I wanted to know if there was an anticipated cost going forward, what the square foot costs were for the one, two, and three bedroom units that were being proposed. Mr. Pinkerton, did you want to answer that or? I would, I would pass that over to the, the developer, Jack Dawley. I think that would be an appropriate question and he would have the better answer. Uh, Mr. Dawley, I should say to town meeting that um, I admitted Mr. Dawley to the floor of town meeting at Monday's meeting in anticipation as a developer, that he might be uh, needed to answer questions. So, Mr. Dolly. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. This is Jack Dolly from Northland Residential. Uh, I have to confess, I didn't bring that particular pro forma file home. I brought the zoning file home. Um, so, I don't have it at my fingertips. Um, so, I'm not going to, I don't have a great answer because I just don't have the data in front of me. Um, the market rate rents um, that we will uh, you know, rent the rental units for will be what the market bears. And then the 50% and 80% AMI levels are obviously adjusted in accordance with local AMI, uh, AMI and DHGC, DHCD regulations. That's the best they can do. I'm sorry, uh, Rafi. All right. Well, thank you very much. I uh, look forward to following the process as it unfolds going forward. Thank you. Ellen. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Cushman Town Clerk. At this time, there are 12 people ready to speak for this question with their hands raised. And the first three people in line are Cosmo Macero, 
Sue Bass, and Gerard Hovsepian. So I recognize uh, Mr. Macero, Cosmo, welcome to the town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening. Cosmo Macero, Jr., town meeting member, Precinct 5. I also speak in favor of the amendment. Uh, I commend the planning board in this presentation, uh, specifically uh, in uh, uh, explaining very key objectives, uh, a number of key objectives that this meets, which I'll go through quickly um, uh, and just reinforce again my support. Certainly the increased tax revenue and bonding capacity, an important objective for the community. Uh, I recall a number of conversations I've had uh, with Mr. Epstein of our select board and others about the importance of housing options for seniors who want to stay in this community, those who are ready to downsize, those who may have to downsize and have, have few options, a very important objective. Um, other, in other areas of Belmont, we are experiencing significant anxiety over what might be described as opportunistic 40B proposals. This moves us in the, in the right direction. It's, it, it's, it's incremental, but it moves us in the right direction to be in a better position uh, uh, with regard to those types of proposals uh, that may not fit in the way that uh, uh, we would expect in certain parts of the community towards safe harbor status. And then finally, certainly there's a desirability for more affordable housing in Belmont. There's, there's, there's a need, there's a legitimate as others, um, town meeting members, McNamara and Sengupta uh, uh, explained well, uh, there is a legitimate uh, housing crisis, an affordable housing crisis in the Commonwealth and certainly within Greater Boston. Uh, I think it's important to participate in the solution to that. Um, you know, I consider, I'm someone who is both, uh, you know, I consider myself a Belmont uh, uh, townie and a, a newcomer. I, I grew up in Belmont. I went to the schools here. I lived elsewhere for 25 years. Uh, I, I, I returned to Belmont uh, uh, with my family about 11 years ago. Um, I want more people to be able to experience this community and, and creating affordable options uh, at different levels. Uh, and, and for people uh, of different generations, I think is an important objective and something that uh, uh, I'm glad the town is, is making steps uh, toward achieving. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. And again, I speak in favor of the amendment. Thank you. The next speaker is Sue Bass. Uh, hello, this is Sue Bass. I'm a Precinct 3 town meeting member, uh, which means that this development is in my precinct. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Thank you, Mike. Um, and uh, I want to say that I may have a conflict of interest, but it's pretty much the same conflict of interest that everybody in Belmont has. Uh, that's because I live a block from Pleasant Street, uh, which is where all the traffic from this development uh, that we're discussing tonight will go. Um, and uh, uh, Pleasant Street uh, really drains, well, the whole, the whole town is going to be even more jammed when this, when this uh, gets built. Um, as some of you know, I have been involved in the McLean zoning issues since 1996. That should be before I was born, but alas, no. Um, and mostly I have opposed it, the proposed developments at McLean, uh, not just for myself and my, the traffic concerns, but on behalf of um, the, because of the effect on the entire town. I'm not opposing this one tonight, however, this proposal is dense. It's not, let's not kill ourselves, it's dense, but it's about half the density of the previous proposal for that space, which was certainly worth opposing strenuously. Um, but I want to make a point that Belmont has missed an opportunity here. Since at least 1986, and probably long before that, people in Belmont have lamented the lack of buses through town. Um, Steve Pinkerton said when I raised this repeatedly at, at uh, planning board meetings, that shuttle bus requirements don't belong in zoning and he may be technically correct. However, 
shuttle buses are routinely required of development proposals and we have should have required this too. I, I know that the select board decided not to reopen the memorandum of agreement for its own reasons and that's the reason we can't rewrite the traffic monitoring uh, and mitigation agreement which I understand by the standards um, of other towns with, with better with more experience with doing these things ours is pretty bad pretty weak um, but uh, uh, that's that's what happened and I think we we really missed I think we really missed the chance here to get um, the various developers in town the various people who who uh, are putting there are some shuttle buses already running like from McLean you know they could have joined forces and together produced a good shuttle bus system through town um, without a huge burden on any particular developer and and that was a mistake um that, so we're we're at the three minute mark here or over it actually thank you thank you thank you miss bass uh, mr hosepian uh good evening mr moderator uh gerard hosepian town meeting member precinct four uh this is regarding the restricted subdistricts for sale uh, when the owner sells in the future How's the sale restricted to the new buyers? Also another uh, question on this. Now, can the owners bequeath this to others or other family mem members? And, and the last question would be, how would the sale be controlled or regulated? Mr. Pinkerton. Steve Pinkerton, uh, chair of the planning board. The uh, age restriction is, is part of the deed. Um, so it, 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 has, it has to be, so if it's going to be passed to anybody, the age restriction goes with the deed. Um, so it's a, it's a permanent restriction. So if, if a person bequeaths it to a family member. They would have to be, meet the age requirements. Okay. And, uh, okay, thank you very much. That answers my question. Very good. Thank you, Emily Peterson. Hi, uh, Emily Peterson, town meeting member, precinct one. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I am enthusiastically supporting this and I hope that we can find other opportunities that serve so many of our town's needs. The question that I have is um, that if we do uh, pass this um, amendment and show our good faith uh, toward our housing production plan, uh, does the select board intend or will that be able to apply for the safe harbor um, status? Um, you know, it takes a while for things to get built and, you know, a lot of unfriendly things could happen in the time that it takes to get this done. I'm just wondering if there's an, a, a, an ability to do that um, and, it, you know, to give us some protection while these things are built and while we can, why we can, when we can come up with other, you know, proposals along these lines. That's my question. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pinkton or Mr. Epstein? Or I can uh, take it too, Mike, if you want. Sorry? I said I can take it too if you want, Mike. Uh, Mr. Dash? Yeah, Adam, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I, mean, I was just going to take it because I do zoning and, uh, and planning and this sort of thing in my day job. So I'm very excited. And Ad Adam, identify Lord, yourself, please. Good Lord, you think I would know that by now. Adam Dash, member of the select board town meeting member at large. Hi. Um, yeah, I do zoning in my day job, and I, I gotta say that I'm very excited by all of this. Um, the one thing about the 40B safe harbor, and this has come up a lot, and uh, Rachel Heller certainly knows more about it than most, uh, in light of the uh, Beatrice Circle hostile 40B application that you may have read about or heard at our meetings, um, and that we can't count these until they're online and the, and the units that are affordable are certified by the state as affordable. Um, for instance, uh, even though the Cushing Square development has been going on for a long time, we can't, we haven't been able to count those units yet towards our safe harbor status of 10%. However, the more of these type of projects we can approve with a substantial affordability component, the quicker we can get there. I'm not saying it's quick, but it's quicker. Um, I should also, just to be clear, 
what we're doing here in town meeting tonight is creating a framework. We're not approving a project. And I think Steve sort of touched on this. The, the, all we're gonna do is create an ability for Mr. Dolly to apply with a project that will then go through the planning board process where there will be robust public hearings and public comment and they'll get it all into the details about trash and trees and snow and all that other stuff. That's not really what we're doing now that what we're doing is just creating a framework to allow that later process to happen. And I think as far as creating more affordability in town, which we desperately need, um, housing for seniors in town, which we desperately need, and um, motion under the housing production plan to get ourselves under safe harbor status, which we desperately need. And you can see in Beatrice Circle, the penalty that comes with not doing that. This project hits all of those marks. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, project. I can tell you that, and you've heard that also from others, we drove a really hard bargain with Mr. Dolly uh, to be, to be uh, fair or unfair, depending on how you look at it. We were very harsh, I think. And there was a point in which this, this whole thing fell apart because the town said, and the, and the residents of the town and the housing trust said, this is what we want, or we're not going to do anything. We'd rather do nothing at all. And to Mr. Dolly's credit, he actually came back and said, I can work with you and do that and make it work for me. And he did. So that is an unusual situation. But this, this the reason why this has taken so long is simply because we've been very stubborn about what we wanted and we weren't gonna take any less than that. And, that's, and this is exactly what we got. Thank you, Mr. Dash. Mr. Moderator, Ellen Cushman, town clerk. At this time, there are eight hands raised to speak on this question. The next three speakers are David Chase, Stephanie Crement, and Carolyn Bishop. Mr. Chase, you're next. I am unmuted. Yes. Uh, David Chase, town meeting member, precinct three. I shall be brief. Um, it, I it's sort of the Beatrice Circle development was sort of a wake up call to me. And I did the exercise of looking around and said, what other lots are like that? And I think when we look at this development, we are we should not compare it to nothing happening. We should compare this to hostile 40 B's. This is a good number of units. And if we don't do them if we don't develop affordable housing in a friendly way, we'll get about that many um, units developed in a hostile way with uh, less room for negotiation, the same traffic, whatever it is, and probably less ability to tinker around the edges in ways that might reduce the number of children sent into our schools. So I favor this very much because um, though I do think we need more housing, I much prefer it in the cooperative model. Um, the regional need for housing also means that over time as prices spike for just a roof over your head in this area, it will become more and more attractive to pick up smaller and smaller lots in Belmont and turn them into little 40B developments. Um, you know, if a roof over your head is a million dollars, that's a lot of profit. And if it's a million and a half, that's even more profit. And so I think we need to think that this is compared to, you know, compared to what? Not just compared to nothing happening at all. I also am less worried about the traffic impact of a development here than I used to be. Um, people have studied the Belmont Citizens Forum had an article in 2017 studying where does the traffic come from and about two thirds of it is cut through. And so if we do have more traffic here making traffic in Belmont worse, some of that cut through traffic will go away, it will go somewhere else and it will mitigate traffic here. But in the same way, if we don't let people live here, they will want to live somewhere and further out is more affordable. And we're in between more affordable and Cambridge and Boston. So we'll get the traffic anyway, one way or another. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Stephanie Kremen. I guess she, she lowered her hand, but Jill Bernard. No, 
Go ahead, Joe. Joe Bernard, town meeting member, uh, precinct three. Um, so I'm in support of the article for many reasons, but really just wanted to speak um, about the traffic concerns and maybe <clears throat> make a couple of points um, about that that haven't been made yet. So one is just that high density housing in general supports nearby retail. Um, so whether that's existing retail or new development, and we know Belmont can use a larger commercial tax base. Um, but as it relates to traffic, that just means greater ease of walking um, for the residents and less likely to create traffic than other types of housing might. Um, and then my other point is for this project specifically, which has age restricted units for seniors. Um, seniors tend to have different driving patterns. They're not going, they mean, they're gonna be out during the day. They're not necessarily commuting during rush hour. Um, that's it. Just wanted to make a couple more points to traffic and why I don't think that should really be a, a showstopper for us approving this article. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Cushman Town Clerk. At this time, there are six people in line with their hands raised. The first is Stephanie Crement, followed by Jean Mooney and Lisa Pargoli. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie, you're next. I'll go back to you. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to lower my hand if I did that unintentionally. Um, Stephanie Crement, town meeting member, precinct three. I want to speak in support of this article. When I think of the community that we want in Belmont, it's a more welcoming community, more diverse community, more just community. And I think increasing the supply of housing is one of the most effective ways to achieve those goals. Um, I know that the impact on our schools is real. Our schools are already overcrowded, but I think that more diversity, racial diversity, socioeconomic diversity will enrich and strengthen our schools. Um, and there was a time in Belmont where we had six elementary schools. I know that requires considerable more resources and planning, but I believe that um, this article is a really important step for our town. And so I just wanted to voice my support. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Next speaker is Jean Mooney. Uh, hi, Mr. Moderator, Jean Mooney, Town Meeting Member, um, Precinct 6. I rise in virtual um, support um, of this amendment article. Um, I really, I've been um, following this process as well for 24 years since the original McLean um, uh, development um, process started. Um, I have been incredibly impressed by um, the process that um, Steve Pinkerton and the Planning Board of overseen um, the participation with Patrice and Jeff Wheeler. Um, we've been fortunate to be working with Jack Dolly in a very friendly way. And it's um, incredibly fortunate also for Rachel Heller and Betsy Lipman and Marty Bittner's um, uh, technical support in these things. And uh, what what's really come together is uh, a winning situation where um, we are improving our housing choices in, um, in Belmont. Um, we have a smaller size scope project than, than we would have had. Um, and we're able to, and so, and the process has allowed this um, to come together um, with, great, with great detail. And um, we do have the protection of the next phase of the design and site plan review. And I encourage um, people to move forward and support this and then enter the next phase um, of oversight so that we can um, see this project come to reality. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pargoli, I'm going to jump over you because you've spoken once. I'll come back to you once everybody has spoken once who wants to, uh, that's part of our bylaws. Uh, David Zipkin. Hi, this is David Zipkin, town meeting member, precinct two. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. So I rise in support of this also for just about all the reasons previously mentioned. I think it's a, a great approach. I had a question though related to commercial development. And I was intrigued by the, the earlier slide that talked about a parcel that is zoned for, um, for commercial R&D. And I had a question for Mr. Pinkerton, um, what the status of that is and what the timing for that is and what the size of that is relative to this development. Mr. Pinkerton. Steve Pinkerton, Chair of the Planning Board. Um, the status is that it remains undeveloped at this point. I know that McLean has uh, interest in potentially moving some of their school operations. I think that's uh, pretty well known to some part of it, uh, bearing in mind that their school would be subject to property tax when they, if they did that. 
Uh, that's part of the, the deal with Zone 4. Um, but uh, for an R&D facility, I, I'm not aware of any active proposals to put something up there. That, that is certainly uh, of interest, however. I, I wish I had a positive answer for you, but I just, <laughs> there, there just isn't any activity that I'm aware of up there on, on that. Thank you, Mr. Pinkerton. Jack Weiss, you are next. Jack Weiss, Precinct 1. Um, I'm supportive of this project. Uh, the reason I raised my hand is um, to um, address a, a comment that uh, David Chase made uh, and that I was surprised um, either Steve or somebody else did not correct. Uh, David uh, was talking about other things that might happen to this uh, site and mentioned that, gee, if we don't approve a friendly 40B, we are subject to a hostile 40B. Um, and I just want to confirm my understanding, my understanding that that's not correct, uh, that the only right now under current zoning, the only alternative if we vote this down is for somebody to come in and build a senior living congregate care facility um, of the size that's in the existing zoning. Is that correct? Mr. Pinkerton. Uh, thank you, Steve Pinkerton, uh, Chair of the Planning Board. I, my understanding of 40B is that uh, a project could be done on that site completely irrespective of whatever the underlying zoning is. Jack, I think that's the, the, the bottom line um, that, that, in fact, no, another project could be developed there. Somebody could correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's my understanding of the process. Um, I'm not sure that that's what Mr. Chase was talking about. I think he meant in general uh, a hostile 40B, not at that site. Um, and, and, and believe that the, at the present, that the site is actually owned by McLean Hospital. So there would have to be an arrangement made between uh, McLean and whatever developer uh, to, to sell the property to them. So it's, it seems quite unlikely that, that the hospital 40, if we don't approve this, I would, I would encourage Mr. Dolly to go ahead and, and develop it since he has the relationship there, perhaps. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I should be saying that, but uh, at any rate, I, I just, I don't think that there's a problem here. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana Poole. Adriana Poole, Precinct 1, um, move the question. Excuse me, I need to unmute myself. Ms. Poole has uh, made a motion to terminate the bay. Just so you know, there are two people in line who have not spoken, one person who has previously spoken. So three all together. Uh, let me ask, uh, for, is there a second to Ms. Poole's motion? Yes, plenty of seconds. Okay. So now uh, we will vote on the motion to terminate debate. Uh, it takes two thirds. And Glenn, as the polls are open, so you may now vote. Vote yes if you want to terminate debate. No if you would like debate to continue. Thank you. Fifteen more seconds. <clears throat> All right, Glenn, let's uh, post the tally, close the polls and post the tally, please. The motion to terminate debate is carried 205 in favor to 43 opposed, obviously well more than two thirds. 
Uh, we now, no, let's scroll this, yes. Thank you. We have uh, Ms. Cushman. We have an emergency vote. Yes, Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, town clerk. We do have an emergency vote from uh, Rafi Manjikian, precinct three on article nine, and he votes yes. And it will be added to the totals if his electronic vote was not been uh, included. Thank you. Thank you. And that would produce a total of 206 in favor, 43 opposed. So now the debate has terminated, we will turn to the vote under the motion under Article 9. This is a two-thirds vote. And so the polls open, Glenn, they are open. Vote yes if you approve the proposal, no if you don't, or abstain. Twenty seconds. So, Glenn, do you want to close the polls and show the tally? Final tally is 255 in favor, five opposed. Obviously, dramatically more than two thirds. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Pinkerton and the planning board and the select board and the town. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, I do have an emergency vote from Amy Checkaway on the main motion in Article 9, which is uh, she's from Precinct 6. She votes yes. And that will be added if there's not an electronic vote uh, received for her already included in the totals. And that would produce, I believe, the final tally would be 256 in favor, five opposed. So that closes the discussion on Article 9. We have obviously one more article, but we are going to take a probably 10 minute break. There may be an emergency meeting of the select board during this break. Uh, that, if you, I believe it's true, that if you stay uh, on Zoom here, you will be able to see the proceedings of the board. And we've had prior permission for this kind of action uh, in terms of meeting the open meeting law with the attorney general. So thank you all very much.
We doing this? Roy? Yes, yeah, is, is Tom on? Um, he's on, he's not turned, his uh, camera's not on, but he's on yeah, the panel. Yeah. Oh, hi Tom. There he is. You're okay. on the air live, guys. Yep. All right, so is are we still in session or do we need to convene a separate uh, meeting? I, I think this is a continuation of our prior meeting. Mr. Moderator. Be more for George Hall as to whether we need to convene or whether we're automatically in session because it's town meeting. Yeah, I, I thought we were automatically in session. Uh, Roy, I think you should just call call the meeting back to order. Uh, I will call our meeting. So this is Roy Epstein, chair of the select board. I would like to call our meeting of September 23rd, 2020 back to order. Um, the reason for this meeting is an issue that has come to our attention regarding Article 10, which is the following. Uh, this afternoon, it's a sequence of events. Uh, this afternoon, uh, it came to my attention that there was a drafting error in the article because it did not specify the effective date, which is something we had intended to do. The effective date that we uh, had in mind was always a date that would protect the interests of anybody in the police and fire department who was taking a civil service exam this fall and potentially could be promoted and we wanted them to have full civil service protection in their new position. That, that was always our intent. Uh, very late this afternoon, we were informed that the uh, date we had, I have to say we assumed was sufficient of March 1st actually was not sufficient. And the date to achieve our purpose would have to be July 1st, 2021. And at that point, uh, we recognize, I would say Patrice and I recognized if it's going to be as late as July 1st, 2021, uh, we may as well um, withdraw this article tonight and then we'll see where we're at in the spring regarding civil service. But it, it didn't make sense to uh, pursue this further right now. That, that's how this all came about. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we've talked about for a long time and you're absolutely right, Roy, that the idea was not to you know, cause a problem for anyone or to be unfair to anyone who was studying for an exam and then pull the rug out from under them by yanking civil service, you know, before they had a chance to actually take the test or get the results. So that was always the goal here, um, was to always be fair to the employees of obviously going forward with Article 10 tonight is not fair to those who are studying for the civil service exam this fall, then I don't know what kind of other choice we have. Because I certainly don't want to do anything that's unfair to them. That's never, that's always been what we've been saying all along in this regard. Um, yes. Um, so um, that, that's where we're at. Uh, I, I have to say that uh, the goal tonight is just to keep it simple. We, we don't want to do something that, that did not reflect our true intention. And there is, at this late date, there is no way to cure that other than to withdraw the article. I, I can say I'm very comfortable with that. I think there is wisdom in postponement, uh, particularly given the uh, logistical challenges. Uh, and I would like to see us take it up in the spring. And I'm comfortable with uh, withdrawing it now. So with that, um, I would entertain a motion uh, to withdraw Article 10. So just to be clear, we would move, uh, we would vote amongst ourselves whether to withdraw it, and then we would have to go and make a motion at town meetings. Is that right, George? Yes. To have, and then town meeting would have to allow the withdrawal. Yes, thank you for that clarification. So this, this would be a motion uh, by the select board. Yeah, I would move that we ask town meeting to withdraw Article 10. Second. So, for the reasons things. stated. All, all. Second. Uh, all in favor? Adam Dash, aye. Tom Caputo, aye. Roy Epstein, aye. And with that, I believe we can uh, adjourn this meeting and return to town meeting. Motion to adjourn. Well, Second. Or do we adjourn, George, or do we stay in in town meeting in session? I, I, I think you stay. You're mo moving to recess. All right. To move, move to recess this meeting of the select board. Second. All in favor? Adam Dash, aye. 
Tom Caputo, aye. Roy Epstein, aye. Guess we'll stay here. I would now like to uh, reconvene the special town meeting. Mr. Epstein, I'll turn to you. Uh, Mr. Moderator, <coughs> Roy Epstein, Chair of the Select Board. Uh, Mr. Moderator, as everybody has heard, the Select Board just um, met and recognized what's really a, a technical error in the article and we think the best course is to withdraw the article from the special town meeting this evening, and that would be our motion. Thank you for that motion. Um, I should emphasize here that the motion under Article 10 has not been read into the record. As a result, Mr. Epstein's uh, intent to withdraw Article 10 it, does not require a debate or a vote on town meeting floor. So, uh, Mr. Epstein, did you want to say anything further that uh, uh, about this? Because yeah, then let, we, let me will, repeat, we will repeat. dissolve town meeting. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Roy Epstein, Chair of the Select Board. Let me briefly repeat what I said at our Select Board meeting a moment ago, and then I would like my two colleagues also to comment. It has always been our intent in um, withdrawing from civil service to treat all of the employees fairly. And a cardinal uh, element there was to make sure every current employee was grandfathered in civil service and enjoy the full protection of civil service that way. It had always been our intent that anybody uh, taking the civil service exam this fall for promotion would be grandfathered with the promotion if they were promoted especially since studying for that exam requires uh, quite a lot of time where we certainly wanted to give somebody the opportunity to be promoted with that protection if they qualified. Uh, it turns out our article does not achieve that purpose. And we think the simplest course of action is simply to withdraw it and, and, um, and, and, not, and, and it's impossible to cure that problem this evening. And I'd be happy if my two colleagues uh, added to that. Well, thank you, Roy. Uh, yeah, Adam Dash, uh, town meeting member, large member of the select board. I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree. And we just, as we just discussed, we had always intended that uh, the removal from civil service would be of no impact to the current employees in the police and fire department, particularly those who are currently waiting to take the civil service exam this fall. So if it turns out, in fact, that the wording of the article as it's been proposed 
does that, then that is not what we were intending to do. And I think that would be colossally unfair to pull the rug out from under somebody who's been in good faith studying for an exam under a civil service system and then suddenly have the civil service system removed. So um, it's unfortunate, but I think the, the situation calls for, we have, there's nothing we can do about it tonight. This just happened recently this evening and there's just no time for us to move forward with Article 10 at this time. I think what we would need to do is actually um, from what uh, the moderator just stated is to move to withdraw Article 10, not because I think what we did was move to ask town meeting to do it. And if in fact the proper process is that we do it, then we should um, have that vote. Uh, I, uh, Tom Caputo, uh, Vice Chair of the Select Board, Tommy, Member Precinct 2. Um, I will echo the comments of my colleagues uh, in the sense that it was uh, never our intention uh, to make it impossible for those currently studying for the exam to proceed in civil service. Uh, I think this sort of last minute change is, is one that uh, forces our hand in this case. And uh, I would say a postponement at this stage uh, is certainly the prudent approach. Um, and uh, I think uh, that gives us an opportunity to uh, continue uh, dialogue on this topic um, and the opportunity to consider uh, bringing this back in September, in, um, in the spring. So I am supportive. Mr. Epstein, to clarify, uh, you are expressing the select board's intent to withdraw because it's not a motion before town meeting if you do that. That's correct, Mr. Moderator. It is our intent to withdraw the article and we just voted on that uh, question. And to I, I guess, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator, I think that what we voted was to ask town meeting to withdraw it technically. And I think we should have to, Roy, have to vote for us to withdraw it. Oh, I, I see. Well, then I would, since we are still in session, I will again uh, ask my uh, esteemed colleague, Mr. Dash, to make the proper motion for our purpose. Uh, I move that the select board withdraw Article 10. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Adam Dash, aye. Tom Caputo, aye. Roy Epstein, aye. And so that's the proper procedure uh, because, again, I explained to town meeting, a motion does not come before town meeting until it is read in the record. This motion was not in the record. Therefore, the select board who proposed this article and made this, had the intent to make this motion, their decision to withdraw, they can make without any further discussion and any vote of town meeting. So I consider article 10 withdrawn. Mr. Epstein. Uh, Roy Epstein, Chair of the Select Board, <clears throat> moved that the special town meeting be dissolved. I'll accept unanimous consent on dissolving town meeting. Thank you all for your patience. Good work at this town meeting. We will see you in the spring. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs>